Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Peter Burnett. Welcome, welcome. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's good to be able to share this time with you. I'm here at Emmanuel Caribbean University doing a, this live streaming, live conversation. If you're online, we'd love to see you, love to talk to you. I love to say hello to all our friends, especially those in the USA. Those of you that are celebrating Juneteenth today, celebrating the abolishing of slavery in the Americas, in the US, we thank God for that great act. We thank God for the things that he has done throughout the ages. You know, I'm always amazed at how God does his thing. He's always changing history. He's always changing time. He's always just doing things that seems impossible. God just keeps doing. Uh, there was a time when the, the even the thinking about slavery was just seemed like something impossible, never could have been done. But here we are, 2023. So many others have gone through um, these very uh, terrible things. But here you are. And that's why I wrote my book, Change the Future, Forgive. Change the Future, Forgive. This is actually a book that you will find on Amazon. Let me just widen up the screen here. I want you to get all of it. There it is. Change the future, forgive. In Genesis 50, 17, I beg you, forgive my, forgive the trespass of your brothers and their sin, for they, they did evil to you. So they did evil. Your brothers trespassed against you. Their brothers sinned against you. They did evil. Now the question is, what are you, what are you going to do about it? You know, here in Jamaica, at the end of July, we also celebrate Emancipation Day. In the U.S. today is a celebration of Juneteenth. By the way, you could go on Amazon, amazon.com, type in Change the Future, Forgive Peter Burnett, and you should be able to find the book. You can download a copy. You can buy a copy. Why don't you buy a copy and support the ministry, support us in what we're doing here. Buy 10 copies. Buy one for every member of your family. Uh, let's get the word out that forgiveness is the way forward. You know, there have been the civil rights movement. There's been, well, before that, there was an abolition movement. The church started that, and many others have been working on that. There have been the civil rights movements. There have been the marches. There have been all these different things that have gone on. There's a lot of conversation today about reparation, a lot of uh, unsettledness still in the heart of many, many people. In fact, you have uh, uh, many, many groups of people who, who look at uh, themselves as being stolen from Africa and the, the terrible wickedness of slavery uh, tend to sometimes define our lives. I, I must tell you that I'm of a different persuasion in the sense that I honor and I celebrate Juneteenth, I, teenth, I honor and celebrate Emancipation Day here in Jamaica, I honor and celebrate my ancestors and those who were, were sold into slavery and brought into the Western world. But um, I do not look at myself as actually being sold into slavery or in any way lost or in any way, um, you know, abandoned. I do not see our life here in Jamaica or in the West as being in Babylon. I believe that uh, God has created me and created you that are listening to me in this particular century and that you were purposely birthed in the country, whether it's in Jamaica, whether it's in the Caribbean, whether you were born in America, you were purposely birthed by God for a specific purpose and on time. And so it's very important that in your own thinking, in your own lifestyle, we celebrate the victories of the past. We remember the hurt and the wickedness of the past, but we realize that we ourselves are standing on the, we, we have benefited from the hard work and uh, of some great forefathers and mothers who have borne the heat of the day. And uh, if we go back and uh, say we are in the heat, then we are not honoring them. They bore the heat. We are really in a whole nother era. We have a lot of coolness around us. We have a lot of troubles. 
but it's certainly not of the same nature of those of our great great grandparents who one day were involved actually in the actual slavery in Jamaica or in Americas or in Brazil or anywhere in the Caribbean. So I got a message today. Um, my book, Change the Future for Give, speaks to the future and speaks to a perspective that I believe is very relevant for today. I believe it's a perspective that would bring transformation to our nations and bring unity and a bridge to the future without ignoring the past or diminishing or in any way denigrating the great sacrifices uh, of those who went before us or the great wickedness or uh, ungodliness on wrong of those systems that have been before us. And so I wanted to bring that here on Facebook today. I know there'll be a lot of people talking and saying a lot of different things. And I believe that it's important that this message the Lord has given me, I, I, I just speak of it. I spent a few minutes on that. So I want to just share with you the biblical foundation for where I'm coming from and what I'm sharing with you today concerning the fact that there is a different approach to dealing with the history of wrongs, whether it's in Jamaica, or in America, or in the Caribbean, or wherever you are in the world. And really, this, his, this difference of history really comes from the word of God. That's right. The scriptures themselves, actually, under the direction of God Almighty, has given us a direction on how to deal with these things. So, for example, in the book of John, chapter 3, John chapter 3 is very interesting because Nicodemus came to Jesus, and uh, Nicodemus was a, was a ruler, you would assume that Nicodemus knew what he needed to know about the scripture and about the things of God. And he, but he saw some things about Jesus. He saw the miracles that Jesus did in John chapter 3, verse 2. He asked Jesus, uh, we know that you are a teacher come from God. No one can do these things. Jesus said to him, really, the kind of life and the way I'm living and the miracles and the things that you are seeing you're really seeing the kingdom of God. So Jesus said to him, Nebuchadnezzar, I mean, Nicodemus, sorry. Verily I say to you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So Nicodemus was surprised at the way Jesus was living. Here the, room, the Romans were in control. Here the Jews were trying to destroy him, the Pharisees and the, Sarisee, the Sadducees. Yet he walked around as somebody who had authority. And Nicodemus was saying, how are you doing that? You're working miracles and things are happening supernaturally. Nicodemus says, but it's impossible. How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And you know, sometimes... Some of us who are from African descent, who great, great, great poor parents were probably sla were slaves and, and it probably because of the color of our skin, you know, we are black or we have African uh, background, African features and all of these different things. Sometimes you may want to think, well, in order for me to succeed in America or to succeed in Jamaica or to succeed in my city or to succeed, I need to be born again. I need to have something different. I need a different color. I need a different nationality. Uh, you know, even to the point where I see today, people are using chemicals to change the color of their skin, to make it lighter, to, the variation. And, and almost as if uh, we need caste system. So I need to be born again. A, a, a young man, many men are told, and young men are told that you have to work so hard because you have to prove something to Everybody, because you are black man or African-American man or Jamaican man, or you have a particular color. And uh, Nicodemus was uh, struggling with this. Jesus says, you, you want to see the kingdom of God? You got to be born again. Nicodemus is really saying what some people say today. Well, if I was born uptown, if I was European or so forth, then I can expect some amazing things to happen in my life. But Jesus went on to say to him, listen. Except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So you're born again. There are a lot of people who say, yes, I believe in God. Yes, I go to church. Yes, I'm a Christian. 
a lot of people of African descent, a lot of people of Jamaican descent, black roots. We are, we would say, yes, we believe in Jesus. Yes, we are born again. Some of our, many of us are baptized. But Jesus is saying there's more to it. You may be born again. You may have heard or you may have seen the kingdom of God because of what your four parents and our, our, our members and, and brothers and sisters who go to church. We, we value the church. We have seen the kingdom. But the Lord says there's another step. He says you've got to enter the kingdom. And I believe that's very important. Because it doesn't matter where you're from, uptown or downtown, rich or poor, black or white, Asian or whatever, Middle East, whatever your nationality is, whatever the color of your skin, however, however a degree of, of melanin is in your skin, melanin is in your skin. My friend, I'm telling you this, that Jesus says there must be a renewal of the mind. You've got to be born of the water, which is the word of God, the word of God. Romans chapter 12 says, we are not conformed to this world, but we are transformed by the renewing of the mind. And then it says we have to be born of the spirit. So the Holy Spirit, that same Holy Spirit that was available at the very beginning of time is now back in the earth, working in the earth. And in order for you to experience the kingdom of God on planet earth, you need to be born again. You have to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. That's why Jesus came. You've got to come and you've got to repent of your sins. You've got to acknowledge that you need the help of Jesus. See, there are two kingdoms. It doesn't matter what the color of skin you have. doesn't matter what nationality you are. doesn't matter if you're free or you are in bondage. doesn't matter if you are discriminated against or everybody loves you. There are two kingdoms, and you've got to choose. If you come into the kingdom of God, life takes on a whole new meaning. Miracles will happen. You will see the hand of God. Emmanuel, you will see God with you. That's why I love the story of men like Ben Carson and men and women who have lived in the middle of, of pain and suffering and discrimination and lack, but they entered the kingdom of God They Turn to the word of God and a new future, a new future. That's the kind of things that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was speaking about when he spoke about him having a dream, that dream life, that dream life for yourself, that dream life for your family, that dream life for your community, that dream life for our nation comes when we enter the kingdom of God. Because you see, We've got to understand what God understands. That's the word of God. We've got to know what God knows. We've got to study the word of God. We've got to get the wisdom that God has. That's by allowing the Holy Spirit to give us a revelation concerning what we are reading. So it's not just going to church. It's not just seeing the kingdom. We've got to enter into kingdom living. It's not just being a member of a church. We've got to enter into kingdom living on a personal level where the word of God and the spirit of God changes us in such a way that we are no longer conformed to the systems of the world or by the systems of the world. See, what Jesus teaches is whether you're in Babylon or not in Babylon, in prison or out of prison, he teaches us how the, in the kingdom of God how to live as free men and free women. See, the kingdom of God is just is a real kingdom. It's just as real as the nation of Jamaica. It's just as real as the United States of America. And the kingdom of God is within nations. And people enter into this supernatural kingdom. In the kingdom of God, it's not just the church or the church building. It includes that. But it is a way of living, a lifestyle that acknowledge God Almighty as our king. So in other words, you may have people who are citizens of different nations in terms of political nation setup. But within those nations, individuals have surrendered their heart and have trusted in Jesus Christ and have accepted him as Lord and Savior. They have acknowledged him as the king and they read the word of God and they allow the Holy Spirit to teach them the principles of the Bible and the word of God. And that's how they begin to manifest kingdom life. Some people say they are Christian people and they're church people. Those are all terms. But the real issue is that they are living 
daily. They are raising their family. They are setting the goals. They have an expectation of their lives. They are, they are having desires. They are marrying. They are buying things. They are living under the kingship of the Lord Jesus. And they are personally creating a relationship with Jesus Christ. They are talking to him. And it's not a fluke, it's reality. And they're experiencing it in their marriage. You're experiencing the kingdom life, the God life in their homes, in their finances. So it's possible to be light even in the middle of darkness. So Jesus went on to say, to explain this to Nicodemus in John chapter three and verse six, he says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. So if my life is just confined to the fact that my four four parents way way back was were slaves if that's how i see myself if i believe the whole societies even if they are still discriminating or they don't it doesn't matter but the, the bible is saying is if that's if you're only born of the flesh then your potential in life is limited to the people of the flesh to the things of the flesh to your fleshliness, to the color of your skin, you are locked into that. But here's an invitation, my friends. Here's an invitation from God for you to step into the kingdom of God. And he says in John 3 and verse 6, that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So there's a spiritual dimension to life that I believe leaders in the past, I think some of the things that Dr. Martin Luther King, for example, spoke about, forgiveness, that it's an ideal, that it's not some unrealistic ideal, that is a work of the spirit, that men and women, uh, uh, George Washington Carver spoke about life in the spirit. So in the kingdom of God, we live at a realm, at a level above what's going on politically, above what's going on economically, above the, the parents or the settings that we are in, there is a life that is spiritual, that can impact you wherever you are living, regardless of your family background, regardless of the history of your family, it is the kingdom life. Jesus says, marvel not that I say to you, you must be born again. And then Jesus began to talk about the amazing things that can happen to the lives of people, even those who are living in oppression or living under bondage. I'm here to tell you that that's why we're here today. I'm here in Jamaica, in a country where so many people had ancestors from Africa and we have seen leaders and in America and all across the Western world, we see people in all kinds of areas of progress and prosperity and blessing and freedom and authors. And we see doctors and we see nurses. We had former presidents and we still have presidents and prime ministers. We have people who are just good people, honest people, hardworking people. And they may be, yes, they are. They have gone through some stuff. Some people may like them, some may not. It doesn't matter. The Bible says, the wind bloweth where it wish is listed or wishes, and you hear the sound thereof, but you cannot tell when it comes and where it goes. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Hallelujah. I want to invite you. If you don't know Jesus Christ as a Lord and Savior, this is what you need to deal with the things of your history. This is the best way to celebrate Juneteenth. It's to enter into the kingdom of God and allow the wind of the Holy Spirit to blow you into an amazing future. The Bible says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, the things that God has in store for them who love him. So I want you to capture what I'm saying to you today. Your future is not determined by your past. Your future is not determined by the people around you. It's not by your environment. Your future is not determined by your ancestors or your parents. Your future is not determined by your address or your location or your zip code or where you live or what school you went to or how much money you have in your pocket. Your future is determined by what you do with Jesus. Your future is determined by whether you just see the kingdom, 
whether you just hear about the kingdom or whether you enter the kingdom and also whether you keep on exploring the kingdom of God. Because as you enter the kingdom, you will find joy, you will find peace, you will find righteousness, you will find wisdom, you'll find the Holy Spirit helping you to make decisions when you are hurt, when you're confused, when others take advantage of you, or when you have opportunity to help others, the Holy Spirit, who is the governor of the kingdom, if you will, he is the comforter, he is the guide. Just imagine going to a new country and having someone as a tour guide leading through the different parts of this country, do through the different challenges. You know, here in Jamaica, we have a place called Duns River Fall. When you go up to Duns River Fall, you need a guide because he will tell you as a, because the water is coming down and the stone and the, the, the fall is slippery. And he said, put your foot there. Okay, good. Now put your foot there. No, hold on to my hand. And he said, stay in this little cliff of the rock for a minute. The water is rough. Okay, come on out. The Holy Spirit is that kind of guide. He'll guide you, young man. He'll guide you through your 20s. He'll guide you as a, as a young man, 18 years old or 30 years old, or if you're a man, 40, 50, whatever your age is, I'm here to tell you, enter the kingdom. Give yourself to the word of God and allow the Holy Spirit to take you. He'll guide your foot. He'll tell you where to step. He'll tell you what decisions to make. And the Bible tells me, my friend, that God will take care of you. Can I tell you? that there's nothing can stop you when you enter the kingdom of God. Really nothing. Nothing can stop you. The Bible says in Romans 8 verse 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. You see, if you only walk after the, the color of your skin, after your ancestors, because your ancestors went through. No, no, if you just only are locked up in the pain of slavery and the pain of your future, and you think your only hope for success in the future is reparations or somebody paying you back, I'm here to tell you that you'll be locked into just the flesh. But there is a, another level. You can, you, know, you can still deal with reparation. You can still deal with all that stuff and you will have the wisdom of God in what to do. But if you're in the flesh and try to deal with those problems, you will not have the wisdom of God. First things first. The first thing that you would need to do is enter the kingdom and walk in the spirit, not after the flesh, not after the color of our skins. No, we are understanding how to make decisions after the spirit. You know, there's a lot of people that tell us today that there's so many problems, you know, this one is against us and that one don't like us. But listen, if you walk in the spirit and you're living in your nation now, I'm not talking, you're not in heaven yet, you're on earth, living in the same zip code, in the same color skin, in the same setting, but something that's different about you, you are born again, you have, uh, you have anchored your soul in Jesus. You have connected your mind and your future to the word of God and to the spirit of God, to the word of God and to the spirit of God, to the word of God and to the spirit of God. Your future is not shaped by somebody's song, somebody's movie, somebody's book, someone, someone projection or, or utterances. No, no, it's shaped by the word of God and by the spirit of God. See that? The word of God, wherever you are in the world. So on this Juneteenth, we celebrate Emancipation Day here in Jamaica. To the word and to the spirit. To the word and to the spirit. That's the movement that God wants to bring about. It's a movement that in, in, in allows forgiveness to flow. So there are a lot of obstacles, okay? Let's look at some of them. What shall we say to these things? This is Romans chapter 8 and verse 31. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Now, the question is, do you believe that or not? I mean, do you believe that if God is for you, you've got the best upper hand? Or do you believe that if God is for you and some other people are against you, then you are doomed? You know, sort of thing set, like we say in Jamaica. Or do you say, man, if God is for me, who can be against me? It says in verse 
32, this is just underscoring God's attitude here. God says, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Think about that. Think about the sacrifice of Jesus. Think about the fact that if God did that, then how will he not give you what you need in the kingdom? You got to follow the kingdom. You got to enter the kingdom. You got to first see the kingdom. Then you got to enter it and give yourself to the word and to the spirit of God while you're living on earth. And God will open up some amazing things to you. Romans 8.33 says, what, Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that what? Justifies. In other words, God is the one that makes things right. God that justifies. And if you've watched that movie where FBI agent was, was, was called, was told that he was crooked and he was working to make himself justified. In other words, he wanted to clear his name. It is God who clears your name. Romans 8, 34. Who is he then that condemneth? To be condemned means you can't get out. You're stuck. Right? The devil has told some of our men and women that because you're black or because you're a different color, because you got freckles or whatever, what's wrong? Whatever you think, they say you're condemned. You can't do this. You can't do this. The man won't let you. They won't. How you have to work so hard, you kill yourself trying to prove something to somebody. No, my friend. Nobody is. If, you're, if you've entered the kingdom of God, if you have entered the kingdom of God, that which is born of the flesh, stuck in the flesh. But if you're born in the spirit, nothing. Who shall separate us? He said, who can condemn us? It is Christ who died. Not you. Christ died. Yea, that is risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who is making intercession for us. So in other words, when you're with the word and the spirit, Jesus is praying for you. Even when you face challenges, he's praying for you. When you have a difficulty, you talk to God. He's helping you through. You're not alone. Who shall separate us then from the love of God? See, if God loves me, that's the most important thing. Not just only that I hear he loved me, that's seeing the kingdom, but I am embracing that love. I am hooked up with the love. I'm connected with the love. His love is now flowing in my life. Why? Because I have given myself to the word and I've yielded to the spirit, to the word and to the spirit, to the word and to the spirit. And he's changing me. I'm experiencing his love. I am then received standing from a place of love in dealing with challenges. Look at some of these challenges. Who shall separate me from this love? Tribulation? How about distress? What about persecution? Persecution. People go through that. People will not give you the job you're qualified for. People will not like you, right? But it says God loves you and he's making intercession for you, right? You don't need to be smoking ganja or smoking or taking drugs or, or just trying to Go out of your mind because you're overwhelmed with so many people that don't look like you or don't like you or you think the system against you. The only reason you would do that, my friend, is because they are singers and musicians making a lot of money off your pain. You don't have to be in pain anymore. And you don't have to be where you sing yourself and you have someone just chanting, chanting negative songs, chanting problems, chanting always in your ears. The beat is strong. You know why the devil wants you to always be in the music zone? Because if you're in the music zone, you are pacifying your pain. You know, he wants us to be high, to be drinking, and never, he wants us to pacify. He doesn't want you to enter the kingdom. How do you enter the kingdom? You got to get out of the music zone. Get into the word and the spirit. Get out of the music zone. Get out of the hip-hop zone. Get out of the, of the Instagram. Get off it, social media. Get off all this stuff that people are telling you, telling you, telling you. If it does not line up with the word of God, with the spirit of God, the word of God, and the spirit of God, that's how we enter into the kingdom. That's how we experience a new life. Who's going to separate us? What about nakedness? A peril, a sword. It says, as it is written, this is Romans chapter 8, verse 36. For thy sake, we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. But in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Notice how we become more than conquerors. Not by fighting. We become more than conquerors. Not by being angry. We become more than conquerors 
receive his love and we are walking in the word and by the spirit, by the word and by the spirit. I am not ignoring the problem by absorbing myself with drugs, immorality, drama relationship, music, partying. I'm not, no, no, I'm facing the challenges knowing Jesus is praying for me. I am dealing with the word. I am being changed. I am getting stronger by the word and by the spirit. The Holy Spirit is telling me, make this decision. Move here, move there, do this, do that. He's helping me as I'm living in life. For I am persuaded, Paul says in Romans 8, 38, that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers, those are political organizations and structures and demonic organizations and structures. He says, all things present, all things to come. So that means whether, you know, in Jamaica, we've got some communities that are controlled by dons, by gang leaders. You could live in an area where there's a don, a gang leader, principality ruling over people. I'm here to tell you, if you enter the kingdom, if you give your heart to Jesus and you allow his word to change you and his spirit to lead you by the word, by the spirit, by the word, by the spirit, he will transform your life. He'll fight for you. He'll give you a heart of love. He'll take care of you. He'll bring you victory. It doesn't matter the color of your skin. It does not matter. Your zip code, it does not matter. Your family background, it doesn't matter that you, you know, way, way back, your four parents were sold into slavery. It, that has no bearing on the future in the kingdom of God. But you got to enter the kingdom. You got to walk with the word and with the spirit. The Lord says, I am persuaded. Are you persuaded? You got to be persuaded about this. See, you got to be persuaded to leave the flesh and enter the kingdom. You got to become a Christian. You got to be a commit, become a firm Christian, a committed Christian, a believing Christian, a wholehearted Christian. Come into the kingdom of God. Let Jesus Christ not just be your savior. Let him be your king. Every day, follow him. Open your heart. Receive his love. Enter the kingdom. And he says, man, I'm convinced. I know that I know that I know that neither death no life, no angels, no principalities, no powers, no things present or things to come, no height, no depth, no any other creation or any other creature, it says in the King James, no other creature, no other creature. That means no other human being. Are you persuaded about that? That no other human being, no other creature, no other creature. No matter the color of their skin, no matter their ethnicity, no matter their caste, no matter their family background, no matter their pedigree. Do you, are you fully persuaded that no creature shall be able to separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus? The love of God in Christ. You got to enter into Jesus to experience a level of security in life. That no government can give you, no army can give you, no legislation can give you, nobody can give you. It's not external, it's internal and it's spiritual. It's not from you because you're strong and you've got good mind or you, you know, you, you feel good this morning. It's just God's for you. God loves you. It's embedded in God. Someone would have to erase God to get to you. Are you persuaded of that? See, I think some of us are not persuaded of it. We believe it, but I pray today that you will not just believe it, you will not just hear it, but you say, Pastor Peter, I'm persuaded of it. Amen? So that's really what I want to share with you. Happy Juneteenth. Happy to happy a wonderful Freedom Day. But take this opportunity to reaffirm a new and a fresh commitment to the Lordship of Jesus. Take this opportunity to say, you know what? As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. If you'd like me to pray for you, I'd love to do that. Leave me a comment online. You can send me a message on Facebook. You can send me an email at pburnettmedia at gmail.com. I'll put the email address here on Facebook. Just want to come to say from my wife, Betty, and I, God bless you. God bless you to all my friends and family over there in Bell Glade, Florida. God bless you. Clewiston, Florida, Georgia, New York, wherever you are in the U.S. on this day as you celebrate. Let's enter the kingdom. Come on in the kingdom with me. Come with me. Let's go. Let's go deep in the kingdom of God. Let's allow the Holy Spirit to, to show us things we've never seen before. 
let's allow the Holy Spirit to transform our lives. And you know the good things, men, good thing, men and women, brothers and sisters. If you will allow the Holy Spirit to take you into a place of victory today, then when your children and my children, when our grandchildren are living if, as a Lord tarry, if we teach them the life in the kingdom of God, oh, they will be so much better off. They will be able to take the blessings of today and they're able to build it upon the rock of Jesus Christ. And it's so true. Eyes we have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of men what God will do with those that love him. Father, thank you for the opportunity you have given me to share about the kingdom of God, to share about how we can honor the past of slavery and wickedness, and yet be able to take the bridge into the future through forgiveness and exploring the beauty of the kingdom of God through your word and by your spirit, through the word of God, the Bible taught and, and, and discovered, and through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I thank you for your affirmation, God, in Romans chapter 8, that nothing can separate us from this wonderful love that is poured out on those who are in the kingdom of God. I pray for anyone listening today that is out of the kingdom, that you will stir them, you will stir them, you will show them that what they have is, a, is not the full picture. Give them a, unho a, a holy uneasiness. Give them a holy uneasiness. Let their conscience be stirred up. Let their palates be wet. Let them be, be, be desirous of the life in the kingdom. And bring them in, Lord. Bring them to salvation. Show them what you have for them. For surely you said in Jeremiah 1, 5, you said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. Thoughts of good and not of evil to give a future and a hope. That's Jeremiah 29, 11, sorry. God says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. In Jeremiah 1, 5, the Lord said to the prophet Jeremiah, before you were born, I knew you. And I ordained you to be a prophet to the nation. So regardless of the color of your skin, regardless of your ancestors, I want you to know that if you are listening to this video, you're alive in the 21st century, nobody sold you anywhere. Nobody sent you anywhere. Nobody uh, robbed you or, so, or, or stole you from anywhere. Nobody put you on a merchant ship. You were born for such a time as this, and you were born to enter the kingdom of God. You were born on purpose. You were not punished by giving you the ancestors you have. God's not punishing you by giving you the color skin you have. And for you to be born in the nation you were born in. God's blessing you. The important thing is you got to now be born of the spirit. To, and to experience the fullness of what God has for you. Don't delay. Look around you. You see the confusion and the pain. You see the circle of killing and destruction and lying. You see the manipulation of the devil. When is enough enough? It's time you enter the kingdom. Come, let today be a day of entrance. I look forward to hearing from you. God bless you. Thank you for spending this time with me. Enjoy your time. Amen.